Thank you. Good morning, still. So I think um, we might be kicking off this uh, little session with uh, uh, a reminiscence to yesterday evening's gathering, which I like very much. And um, I would like to ask you two questions. So first question, those of you who are convinced that we will use technology to enhance our future brains, please stand. Okay, and those of you, second question, who would be willing to accept a brain implant to support their cognitive capacities, please stay standing. Okay, so we see that this community is a pretty much uh, tech-positive community, even if it goes into our brains, it uh, relates to our brains, and that's what I'm uh, going to be talking about. Thank you very much for giving us this, this little impression. So, I think we are approaching kind of a turn of, of the tides again in human evolution. And that is based on the fact that we have started to treat our brains differently than before. Up to now, almost up to now, our brains have been something like the arcane, mysterious superpower that runs our lives, our social gatherings, our society, our systems. We have started to learn something about our brains, but we still don't know much about the structure and the functionality. And that's starting to change these days. So, this arcane superpower might turn into something else, might turn into something that relates to a marketplace, not just a marketplace of ideas, but a marketplace of cognitive capacities that compete against each other on a human level and that also compete against artificial intelligence on the next level of human evolution. And this turn of the tides will change a lot regarding how we perceive ourselves, our individual personalities, how we perceive our social togetherness, and how we perceive even humankind in lots of ways. So I would like to talk a bit about how we do this, how we enhance our brains in times where we are really taking the next endeavor like the next frontier movement in which the brain becomes this marketplace, this place of competition of cognitive superpower in the future, where we will need something like bigger brains to, to thrive in an environment where this competition will really be one of the major drivers of this future society. And we do this by tackling our brain as a resource, in a way, and using techniques of brain hacking, using technologies to interpret, to understand, and even manipulate our brains uh, to make our thinking maybe more loud and clear, or even bolder in, in ways. So this brain hacking starts with a very easy uh, first step where you can consider um, using technology as um, a lifestyle product to uh, improve your focus, your uh, concentration, your activation or your relaxation. And this is just the first step um, where we can go, uh, which we can take to go further and go deeper into the brain. The next step would be something like brain reading or thought reading, which already works out pretty well, um, where you use um, highly efficient algorithms to detect the brain waves that occur uh, in patterns, in different patterns, whether you think the letter A or you think the letter Z. And then you can, you can just write by thinking. It's a very slow process, but it will become quicker and quicker. And Mark Zuckerberg um, has promised us um, a few um, months ago that Facebook is working on a little device you can put on your head that will be able to detect the patterns of your brain waves while you think speech 
um, and you talk to yourself and just let you uh, think your text messages into your devices at a speed of 100 words per minute, which is actually <laughs> much quicker than uh, some people can basically think in general. So. <laughs> This is brain reading or thought reading, and it goes even a step further relating to the brain implant I was asking about before, where you put an implant into your brain, to a certain uh, realm of your brain, and you can enable, for example, locked-in patients to use their thoughts to steer a robot arm to grab a bottle of water or a piece of chocolate. So from the medical point of view, brain hacking is, first of all, not the right word, but um, mainly a major improvement in our lives and a progress really a lot of people wouldn't want to miss. But still, we don't know much about our brain. So thinking about that this might be what our morning coffee in the future looks like is just crazy. You actually don't want your morning coffee in the future to look like this. Transcranial current stimulation to activate your brain instead of enjoying a cup of coffee will probably not be the way how we um, tackle the, the platform of uh, competitive cognitive resources in the future. Behind those ideas, there's a much bolder um, concept I would like to figure out, and that is not only tapping into single brains, but connecting individual brains to a brain network. And that has worked out in the first uh, place by uh, using two rats to set up the first organic computer, actually, four years ago. How did this happen? This is the idea that's behind all those uh, basic progress, uh, steps of progress in brain hacking to set up such a network. So you have a rat in a uh, cage in the US, and you have a second rat in a cage in Brazil. The first rat, um, needs to, uh, to tap a lever to get a sip of drink, a sip of water, when a light goes on. So that is basically Pavlov's, uh, Pavlov's learning concept. Light goes on, rat taps lever and drinks a sip of water. This is the first rat in the first cage in the US being provided a brain implant, a little electrode, that is connected via the internet with a second brain implant of the second rat in Brazil. And the, the, the data from the brain of the first rat um, is just uh, transferred to uh, the brain of the second rat via the internet. And then this happens. The second rat approaches the lever, presses the lever, and drinks a sip of water, even without any light in the cage to signal what's supposed to happen. So this first organic computer was set up between two brains of two rats, intercontinentally set up, and gives us an idea about uh, what, what these neural networks, um, basically biochemistry uh, neural networks, will look like or might look like in the future. Still, it's an experiment based on the brains of rats, but if you took, talk to a um, lot of neuroscience, they say, yeah, well, we will be able to do this, even if it's like 50 years in the future, but we will be able to do this. And one uh, guy um, promoting this idea is, for example, Elon Musk with his company Neuralink, and he argues we will need such brain networks connected to an artificially intelligent cloud to be able to compete with artificial intelligence and not um, hand over the decision-making for our lives and our future to the computer or to the machine. Elon Musk thinks about implanting brain implants in each and every brain of each and every single individual on this world and connect all these implants via uh, wireless and electrically self-sustaining um, devices, so that we can think together as a crowd. And that will be a very interesting idea, a really bold idea. Imagine this situation in this room this morning. I don't know if I would be speaking even, because I could just think what I'm just talking about, and you could 
follow up to what I'm thinking and, and join in to my thinking. So I don't even know if what I'm thinking about is still my idea or my thought or whether we would be like crowdsourcing this little talk in a way uh, nobody can imagine how this would work out. And that's basically a very bold and also a very beautiful idea. We would still um, experience lots of individual brains, but turn them into one universal consciousness in a room like this, in a society like whatever um, one you can imagine, or even on a global scale. That's the basic idea, and that's the beauty about it. Of course, like always, in terms of technological transformation, there's also another, um, another side of the medal, because if something like this happens, we will be um, in the position to, to experience a basic change of how we perceive ourselves, our individuality, our cognitive freedom, and uh, even humankind. And that is basically related to the fact that whenever we can enhance our brains and turn them into one universal consciousness by the use of technology, we will also experience that this marketplace of cognitive competencies um, and performances will create a new competition where those not being able to enhance their brains by using maybe expensive technologies will be left behind. Something like a new social um, exclusion that might be coming up in this regard. And we will also be in the position uh, to be challenged by all the others um, being able to think um, better, however that might be, quicker, bolder, more creatively, and to, to figure out how we can sustain um, in, in a world that is basically competitive regarding the performance of our brains and how we stay mentally electromobile um, to really compete with all the other people um, connected in our brain network and in the brain cloud I was talking about. So the idea is that our cognit cognitive capacity will turn into a, something like a mathematical function that you can like switch on or switch off by using technology. And I guess that's probably one of the basic uh, challenges we have to face in, in this bold idea about the future of connected brains, because still we don't know whether this will work out, whether you can really use like a switch to turn on a capacity in your brain and turn it off again. So, looking at this on a broader scale, we might be um, uh, facing a development that changes the world we live in, the societies we live in, in a way I would call neurocapitalism, where the cognitive performance of each and every single brain will be measured against the cognitive performance of other individual brains and the performance of the cloud in general. And if you do that, that's a pretty different uh, way of looking at individual um, cognitive capacities than we know it as of today. So this way um, of, of so this idea of neurocapitalism means that each and every person has to um, interpret his or herself as a dynamically renewable um, person who is willing to expand his or her cognitive capacities, however she or he can do this. And using technology will be one way of doing it. That might be, on the one hand side, to sum it up, a very, very bold and beautiful idea to be able to connect our brains into one basically universal consciousness. It's, by the way, maybe something that a lot of people relate to the concept of, uh, of love to really be able to, um, to, uh, to merge two personalities and two ways of feeling and thinking. That's the beautiful part of it. On the other hand, it can turn into a nightmare because you always have somebody in your head thinking with you or even determining how you think about the world and your life and your, your wishes and everything related to uh, what's happening in your individual brain. 
Still, we need to tackle that question, because technology is here. We have already started to hack our brains as individuals, but also um, as a, as a uh, way of, of progressing uh, into this, this uh, society of neurocapitalism. And everything that is related to AI and what AI can do will boost this development in lots of ways. So maybe it's a bit like this little poem I brought to you. Uh, I just quickly read it out. The sun rays struck my face, warm tingles to my fingertips. The light showed me a path I should walk down. I spoke, and the whispers of the breeze told me to close my eyes. I lost my way in a paradise. It might be that we are losing our ways in a paradise of imagined universal consciousness. But first of all, we should think about how to determine what we want to uh, undertake in this future of connected brains and what, what we don't want to undertake. And this poem, by the way, is not part of uh, the, the well-known poem by the wonderful US uh, poet Robert Frost from the 19th uh, century, The Road Not Taken. It's a poem created by an artificial intelligence, which was, was developed by Microsoft in uh, collaboration with the research team at the Kyoto University. So you see that we tap into lots of new ideas of uh, formerly basically human capacities that have started to be turned into something AI can do itself. That's the reason why a lot of people say we will need bigger brains in future, and we will need technology to connect our brains and enhance our thinking in ways we haven't imagined before. So whatever road we want to take, be it the optimistic perspective, the beauty of an emerging consciousness, an emerging universal consciousness on the one hand side, or figuring out the problems, the challenges, the left behinds that might be related to this perspective uh, on the other hand side, we just need to start doing it, thinking about it. And the beauty of this whole topic is that we have everything at hand or at head we need to figure out how we want the future to evolve. We can just start thinking about it and decide what we want to do and what we don't want to happen. So think, it's not illegal yet. Thank you very much.